Boop, 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 boop. Breaking news. I'm Zombie Zebra, this is Zombie Zoology, and I'm putting a halt to all regularly scheduled programming to bring you this exciting news bulletin, which is that today, March 15th, 2017, the American Journal of Medical Genetics has published the a new internationally agreed upon set of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome classification. This is the first time this has been updated since 1997. Professor Rodney Graham has been quoted as saying, no other disease in the history of modern medicine has been neglected in such a way as Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. But that stops today, because today, for the first time in 20 years, we've had a group of physicians come together and write 14 articles that will be published on Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, updating the diagnostic criteria, updating information for physicians, completely redefining the hypermobility spectrum disorders. There is so much good progress being made in this. So first, I'm gonna try and quell some people's fears. I know that in general, anytime diagnostic criteria is redefined, and I can tell you I was incredibly guilty of this, anytime di diagnostic criteria is redefined, it's really easy to be against it because you're afraid of losing your own diagnosis. Especially with EDS, it takes us a long time to get this diagnosis. So the idea of criteria being changed in such a way to have that label taken away from you, that can be really scary. And I was scared about that too. But let me explain to you that that is exactly why we need to do this. Not because we want to take away anyone's names or anyone's labels or anyone's diagnoses, but because it takes us so long to get Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome's diagnosis. And that's because physicians all over the world have a very different understanding of what EDS is. The definition has always been very loose, there's not much research done on it, and the diagnostic criteria isn't very clear. So there's lots of room for physicians to fail to diagnose Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome when really it should have been pretty obvious. It happened to me. I wasn't, I didn't hear the phrase Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome until I was, I think, 20. So. We really needed this because now that we have the more specific guidelines, physicians will be able to recognize it easier because now they have a solid understanding to go off of and we'll be able to get more Ehlers-Danlos diagnoses, which will lead to more research for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and that is what we need. Now the other important part about this is this is not a one-time deal. This is not they met now for the first time in 20 years and it's going to be another 20 years until we hear from them again. No. There are now committees that will be meeting every year to redefine certain aspects of this. If something upsets you about this current diagnostic criteria, please do not give up hope on the whole Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome community. Do not give up hope that that may be your diagnosis. We are just trying to hammer out a more exact diagnosis and we have to start somewhere. So I'm gonna dive in to first the nitpicky stuff, the name changing, the new terms, so that as I use those things going out, you'll know what I'm saying. So let me get started. There are a couple new things. For example, the big change, and the thing that I'm going to have to catch myself on a lot, is that Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is no longer what we're supposed to call it. It is now called the Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes. That is to try and solidify the fact that this is a collection of connective tissue disorders. It is not one gene, it is, it is not one gene mutation that causes one thing. It is a vast array of disorders that fall under this, Eller, this umbrella of the Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes. So, I'm gonna have to catch myself on that a lot. Another change I'm very excited about to the terminology is we are completely getting rid of the numerical descriptors for the different types of EDS. You will no longer be able to call it type 1, type 2, type 3. Those no longer exist. It is now vascular EDS, hypermobile EDS, classical EDS. No more one, two, three, because I have one of those and I couldn't keep them straight. We've been using a lot of incorrect language in the community, for example, referring to the fact that, oh, well, I'm crossover type one and three. So while we know that we're no longer supposed to use numerical descriptions, they have also now clarified that it is not possible to have two different types. They are hoping with this new diagnostic criteria to be able to definitively sort people into the types that they are, whether that be hypermobile, classical, vascular, or one of the rarer types or the new types. So I know it's kind of annoying to change the way that you speak, but I promise that this change is meant to provide more clarity, which will bring more people into awareness of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, because the more clear we are on the language we're supposed to use, the easier it'll be for outside people to latch onto it, as opposed to if they hear us referring to like type three and hypermobile type and this crossover stuff, which isn't even medically accurate and all this other stuff. If we can work together and really get our language more exact, we'll be able to bring more people in and spread more awareness. So 
That's something I'm gonna have to work on. If you catch me do it in a video, please call me out in the comments. I want to try and break myself of this habit immediately. If you have any questions, if you find yourself wanting me to clarify anything I've said, or if you've heard something about the release from somewhere else and want clarification about it here, definitely ask me. Questions that I get will help me guide the future videos that I make on this subject, so do not be afraid to ask me questions, ask me to clarify things. I am more than happy to do that. And frankly, there is a lot of information here. There were 14 articles published in a medical journal about EDS. That is more attention than we've gotten, I swear, in the past 20 years combined. So it's very exciting, but there is a lot of it, meaning that it's very overwhelming for me to dig through. So if you do give me questions, it's gonna help me guide and outline my future videos about this. So it would really help me out if you have questions to ask, that'll give me a starting point. Help assist out.